All right, what's going on, folks? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech and Gaming, which is a fusion of like this technology and gaming, and we're doing a reaction video. Uh, I know it's been a while. Um, <laughs> honestly, a short version is the amount of dumb on the last one, which was somebody that I really don't like, as people mostly know. It boiled down to I think my brain needed a break from reactions because uh, I think the vein and everything else was about ready to explode from the amount of dumb. But this one was interesting because I do enjoy seeing some of these kind of new user videos or recommendations, et cetera, that some other people put out and whether or not they're actually going to be, you know, halfway intelligent or if they're going to be totally stupid. So I always find it interesting to see how these guys come about it. So this one came out about six days ago. Mistakes that new Linux users do while starting to use Linux. Now that is one hell of a long title. Has been one hell of a long intro, so let's get into the video. Hi there. Today we'll discuss about some mistakes that Linux beginners make while switching to Linux. If you're thinking about switching to Linux, then watch this video till the end so you can avoid these common mistakes and switch more easily. Linux is not Windows or Mac, it's very different. So first thing I notice, uh, AI generated voice from just from the way the center structure is going about. So I'm not going to flag on that, but generically not a fan. So first point, they haven't really discussed it, but Linux is not Windows or Mac. Very true. Why is it not Windows or Mac though? Let's get in to see what you say about that. As soon as you start Linux and explore, you will realize it. All drivers are built into the kernel, so you do not need to install drivers separately, except for some NVIDIA proprietary drivers, but for some distros like Manjaro or Pop! OS, NVIDIA... That's not necessarily true. You also will have to... <laughs> if you have a real tech uh, Wi-Fi card, uh, you have to install a lot of outer kernel modules now if distros don't so that's not exactly 100 percent true so do keep that in mind um generically i have found that if that statement of everything being built in the kernel while true is also not fully true it's like probably like 75 percent accurate most of the stuff that you would need for the kernel like you would normally need for extra drivers like you would in windows or mac os you do not need to do because a lot of that is baked into the kernel however to say that you don't is factually incorrect and that there is only a very few instances the instances are becoming more and more i find but nvidia is the biggest culprit not gonna lie and so that's changed with nvidia and they're um, open sourcing certain things and whatnot for their drivers so interesting it's time for to be a NVIDIA person on Linux, just to say the least. NVIDIA proprietary drivers comes pre-installed as well. The file system is also different in Linux. Linux uses mainly EXT4 and BTRFS, but in Windows you'll mainly see NTFS. So, uh, yeah, I, that's, um, EXT, insert number here, XFS, ButterFS. Um, you'll, you'll see some like riser FS occasionally here and there. You'll see some, you know, there's a lot of different file systems that Linux plays around with. Uh, Windows, NTFS, XFAT, FAT32, FAT16, that's kind of generically where it plays the most. You'll see some outliers here and there that Windows might support, but generically those are the ones that if you want the most windows compatibility format a drive in that and you know you'll probably have a better luck being able to actually read the thing on another os so yeah file systems are different fs and fat32 linux can read fat32 and ntfs also but windows cannot read ext4 or btrfs at least not by default there will be no C drive or D drive in Linux. As you can see in the screen, this is the root folder structure in Linux. So here's the thing. This isn't going to matter. Like if we're talking new users, this is like going to Sys32 as a new user. You wouldn't fucking go in there to begin with 
So going into the like actual slash directory, you shouldn't be doing generically as a new user anyway. You're going to basically be going to these places over here that say like home desktop documents and that stuff. That's the shit that most new users are going to care about, especially jumping around. And because most of the shit in here, <laughs> you, you can fuck up a system, but most of the shit in here is, you know, super user privileges and all the other crap. So I, I'm just saying like, this isn't somewhere most sane users will go. The only thing in here that they're going to click on is that home directory to get into this shit that all it's already pinned for them. So I'm not a fan of kind of, but yes, file locations are going to be different. So instead of C, it's going to be, you know, home or insert thing here and you know your removable drives it's literally just click on the drive and there's all your folders and however you just decided to structure the folders as opposed to the other way around but if you're going to dig down and actually look for all this stuff you know this is like run media then or media then it's in run then it's dig down and find the uuid and all the uh, like if you're going to really dig into it yeah it's like it's different but the stuff on the sidebar here that's in dolphin or really any file manager is all the places most sane normal end users are going to care about because this shit is way too uber technical for them and yeah most people are just going to break shit if they go there now, granted, again, super user privileges, immutable file systems, and all that stuff, notwithstanding. In Linux, you can use App Center to install softwares as you would do in your smartphone. Also, you can use commands to install multiple softwares at once with one single command. You do not need to go to website by website to download the executables and agree to a ton of license just to install a software as you do in Windows. Uh, you're correct. You, uh, so new user, that second option, totally fucking ignore. Go use the GUI. <laughs> Go use the software center. It's all about how the, it, you're targeting specifically new users. So I'm, I'm assuming these are like just everyday normal users. These aren't like the Uber tech literate people. So that command line shit that you just saw, totally fucking ignore if you're the new user. I I'd highly discourage that stuff unless you want to learn it. No different than ignoring the, you know, PowerShell or CMD or prompt or uh, the other whatever's in macOS terminal or whatever macOS is calling their terminal emulator now. So it all doesn't really matter at the end of the day, because most sane people are going to use the pointy clicky interface. So I would ignore that. But yes, it, the way you install applications on Linux is very much like a smartphone or Mac OS. We were just doing it before, well, Mac OS. You do not need any antivirus software in Linux. Linux is a very secure operating system. Linux doesn't need to defragment hard drives. Its file system is also supported. Antivirus, it depends. How much do you interact with Windows systems? How much, you know, are you a mixed network? There, there's a lot of situational stuff with that one. So I'm not saying that's going to be 100% accurate either. It is more resilient when it comes to the way it's designed for that. You know, multi-user system narrowed down to single user, whereas Windows essentially is single user trying to upscale the multi-user. But generically, I'm not a fan of the, you know, neat because it's it's a myth to a certain extent because it, it's very situational. Uh, defragment <laughs> is not necessary. Uh, if you've used an SSD, and you know, oh, I don't know, in the last, when did Ultrabooks start really becoming popular? You know, 2010. So in the last 15 years, you really haven't had to really fucking worry about defragmenting shit uh, with SSDs and everything else. So it's kind of a moot point. Now, there are things like FDisk check and a few other ones that will check the integrity of the disk and all that stuff. But they're, they're, that's different stuff. That's not the traditional like defrag a hard drive kind of thing. 
That's always been a Windows thing. But yes, if you're running bare metal, you know, platter drives, you do not necessarily need to defrag the hard drives because of how the journaling and all the other stuff in the file systems work on Linux specifically. So superior to Windows. Linux will not force you to update. Update your system only if you want and when you want. Some people have confusion about backslash and fr you're not wrong that's that's the biggest perk that that control that you just talked about they're monotonely talked about via chat chat qbt or whatever ai you're using you're not wrong so that is very true you can do a whole bunch of different control type of stuff with your system and you are not at the whim of uh insert corporation you're at your own whim of how you want to update your system or what you want to do with your system. There are some systems that I've seen that are totally disconnected from the internet and just keep running and running and running and running because they're appliances. Windows as an appliance OS is fucking terrible. So look at any point of sale system and see how often Windows is broken on it. And front slashes. Windows thinks backwards, so it uses backward slash in file navigation. <laughs> But Linux and the whole World Wide Web thinks forward. That's why they use forward slash. That's how I remember this. Desktop environments and distros are not the same. You can make a distro look like any other distro you like. For instance, Ubuntu is a distro and KDE is a desktop environment. Ubuntu comes with a modified version of GNOME. So, if you want to change GNOME to KDE, you can. If you want Linux Mint Cinnamon to look like Ubuntu, you can install GNOME Desktop on it. Distros doesn't matter. You can customize everything from top to bottom. You were doing so good until you said distros don't fucking matter. Distros do matter because they're pre-packaged for particular markets and demographics that most users aren't going to give a two-bit shit about. You're talking new users. Most of them want a pre-compiled, pre-built package for them to be handed. They don't want to go the Arch or Gen 2 or Slackware way or the Nix OS or any of the other ways and have to build the shit themselves. 90% of the population is not that tech literate nor that interested in fucking technology. Realistically. So, yes, distros do matter. So, can we knock off the CTT bullshit statement of distros don't matter? Because they do. People often installs Linux directly on their system and later regrets it. Linux comes with a live system option. So, instead of directly replacing your current operating system, try it on a virtual machine or just boot up the ISO and try the live system and explore. You and I will constantly deride any person who's looking to, on a piece of physical hardware, jump from whatever OS they're on, on that piece of hardware to Linux. I will deride any idiot that tells you just boot up a VM because. The VM, while controlled environment, is not, emphasize the word not, the piece of machinery that you're trying to fucking install it on eventually. You will have better results, good or bad, and whatnot, when you at least do the live environment. Not always. There's still There still can be issues from time to time. But generically... And doing a live USB is far, far, far better results and far better expectations wise of what you will or will not get with your Linux experience on that piece of hardware. A VM is just like, oh, I want to try something. That's what a VM's for. Not if you're like, seriously, if, you, if you're already down to the live USB part, you're talking about like making the jump or at least on a machine at that point. So it doesn't really matter, but I, I'm not, I've never been a fan of VMs as far as Linux distros. I'm more of a stick it on real, real metal or, you know, silicon, whatever you get the idea. 
that's just me. That's not everybody else, though. So do as you do. You need to be familiarized with the system. Try different desktop environments and see what suits you best. Try different distros and see which one you like. Linux has flavors like ice cream. Everyone has different taste. Linux is a different operating system. Some applications will not be available in Linux like Adobe applications, Microsoft Office, AutoCAD, etc. But their open source free alternatives are available in Linux. Click. Alternatives are not drop in replacements. Alternatives are just that alternatives. They f features and functions uh, work in an alternative way than what you're potentially used to if you're not willing to look at those alternatives and you're i'm adobe only i'm blah 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 and by the way microsoft uh, office 365 for at least for the cloud version works on linux i don't know if crossover has recently gotten any of the newer versions of office working but i know the you know uh, whatever the online version works fairly well just use edge unfortunately but realistically that partially true Partially not, because a lot of Linux applications or apps that are available on Linux are also available on the platform you're potentially coming from, which is a Windows or Mac OS. So, kind of true, kind of not. It all depends on what you're already priorly using. Generically, the best way to ease the transition and switching over is to use similar app those applications on the platform before you make the jump. And that way, when you get to the platform that you're on, which would be Linux, insert distro here, you can just keep going and you really don't miss a fucking beat. So just my take. Uh, but yeah, generically it's their alternatives. They're not dropping replacements and there's going to be a learning curve. It, it's just like when you switch to Android or iOS or Mac OS, the windows or whatever, they're, they're same applications aren't all going to be there. Everything's different. Click on the link in the i button above to know what alternative apps you can use in Linux. Although you can play many Windows games on Linux through Wine, or you can run some softwares as well. Wine is a compatibility layer for running Windows application on Linux. If it doesn't run on Wine, use a virtual machine to install Windows and then you can run your apps. Dual boot no. is also an option for new users. No, dual boot is not an option because Windows does not play nice when it comes to being on a disk with other <laughs> other things. Never has, never will. Um, look at how many error issues there have always been when Windows does updates. Nukes and paves, you know, UFI, uh, EFIs, it's nuked and paved grub. It, it, there's so many things that I can go wrong with dual boot. Separate, if you're going to dual boot, separate disks that's a little different that's a different but if you're on the same drive fuck no don't do one you're, you're, then you're gonna have basically two interoperable systems if one's bored unfortunately so uh i'm not a fan of, of the oh stick it in a vm like bro if i can't get my apps to work then why the fuck am i actually gonna go and switch desktops or you know not desktops but you know why am i switching os's so that, that's kind of a moot point like and VM performance isn't the greatest sometimes when it comes to uh, more intensive applications, shall we say. So not always, that, that's kind of a, that's not really a argument. That's more of like a pop out bullshit answer. I, I've never been a fan of that. So again, personal take here, personal recommendation here. But like if, if you're that hard up to still need to be in them, then... The switch just might not be for you, and that's okay. You know, the, the thing is, we have to make, the technology has to fit the person. We can't make the tech fit the person. No. We can't make the person fit the technology. That's the difference. So if they're comfortable in Adobe, I'm not going to say, oh, go use Sinalira, which is like a 180 degree fucking mind fuck on how to do stuff. It's just different. But if they're willing to try stuff, then okay, cool, whatever. If they understand that there's going to be a learning curve, cool, awesome. Like that That's the thing. So, again, not a fan of the VM thing. And as far as wine, 
Windows games work because of Proton, which is based on Wine, yes, but uh, the Proton stuff is specifically more focuses on gaming and all that stuff. Wine is hit or miss regardless from my own experience. So I'm wary of making that recommendation of wine. If you're going to go that route, I would seriously recommend trying to use a GUI application like Bottles or something like Play on Linux or something like Lutris if you're really going to go that route. But that's only like a last solution if none of the alternatives work. And you need real performance, which you won't get in a VM. The possibilities are endless. New users tend to copy commands from the internet and run with pseudo permissions without verifying the command and break their system. Make sure that... Yeah, you know why they do that? Because when they go to the man pages to get fucking help or to install an application, they're told to copy and paste this command into the terminal and it'll give you what you want. Get the picture as you show, sudo rm-rf. There it goes, you just blew up your, you just blew up your system. So that's a, that's a reality problem that Linux users don't want to admit that they create the perception of this by the information that they provide out in the world to actually see. They don't provide the GUI options. Here's this insert random command here, which is, you know, people going to be people. You know, this is the same group of people. If we're talking new users, next, 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 next. Now, why do I have 75 toolbars on my, you know, Internet Explorer? This is that crowd. So they're not going to care if you tell them Control-C, Control-V, or sorry, Control-C, Shift-Control-V into the terminal and tell them to go and type in a password and off you go and just hit yes to whatever. And you expect good results. So that's a monster of our own fucking creation, not gonna lie. Sure, the command is for your distro because some commands are distro specific. And also, yes, some commands are distro specific, you know, apt or DNF or uh, Pac Man, etc. The, you know, insert the uh, various commands here that you can do. Or it depends on the, the shell that you're using and all this insert a lot of different things that can go on anyway yeah I, i'm just i'm not a fan of the, the the linux user get good mentality sometimes not everyone cares about tech so the oh, no what the command does is not the right fucking answer for the target demo you're talking about which is new users new linux users specific and also distro version specific also verify what the command does before running it. If you're not sure, run it on a virtual machine first. Bad As advice. you gain experience with Linux, you'll get to know what commands not to run, but it will take time. If you have an interest in getting deeper into the system and more control and all the other stuff, then yes, learn the CLI. But that's if you have an interest in it. And 99% of people fucking don't. That's the reality. New Linux users give up too soon when something doesn't work for them. If something doesn't work or something you don't like, try other things. If you don't like the look of a distro, try another desktop environment, try another distro for a change, install new themes. New icon packs, experiment with the system. Linux won't stop you from shooting your own foot. You'll learn new things. You'll learn what works and what doesn't. The truth is, you'll gain more knowledge about the system if you use Linux than using a Mac or Windows. So overall, there, I'd say I probably agree with like 70% of it. There are certain things that are more like situational, like the VM thing. Um, the find what works that's relative to your willingness to explore so that's again that depends on your approach that you're coming to with linux in general so i'm gonna probably rag on some linux users by saying the 
those that are in the community currently. Put your personal preferences for your fucking, you know, ride or die drifter that you're going to go for. Put that aside and put yourself into the person that is asking for distro recommendation shoes and what they're looking for. Their experience level. All that stuff is what fucking matters. So, out of propensity, get your own dicks out of your hands and stop trying to swing them around saying, See, use this! Because that's just not the same for everybody. So, at the end of the day, uh, for the most part, other than the AI-generated voice and the, the some of the user stuff, um, well, this is fine for the most part. Um, just not a fan of the over-reliance of, oh, get good, because, let's be real, it's kind of like in gaming, some people just don't fucking care. And that's just kind of my take. But anyway, that's my take. What do you guys think? Am I right? Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong, according to most of you. I'm used to that fucking end of the stick. But at the end of the day, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And I will catch you on the flip. And you got a Patreon. All that stuff is down below.